All right, we're recording. All right, here I'm joining. All right, I'm in. I do have screencasts going on Lucid Chart screen here, and it oh. it hasn't crashed, so it looks like it's working with Hangouts and screen recording. I'm not sure how it's doing that. All right. All right. So back to that Lucid Chart. Uh, You've got your users in there. One thing we also, I think I, as I was getting to this, just as it hung up, we need somehow to track uh, who has the privileges uh, to approve. And that's something, do we put that in their user? Uh, maybe have a field just called uh, role. That's a typical thing we'll see in a lot of systems. You just have a, a role assignment. And then in the code, if their role is either an above a certain number or equal to a certain value like manager, then we could say, okay, they have the right to approve. So that's probably enough there uh, for our users. Now getting to back of getting back to how do we know if we have enough information in our tables? Let's think about usage and and that gets back to the whole I think of the use cases. In a particular use case, we don't have to make a drawing or anything, but think of a use case. Uh, first of all, I think with this, we're thinking of the use case of you know, submitting an item to eBay. So that's the use case that's driving right now our design of these tables. So if we look, think through the process of uh, taking an item, putting it on the photo in the photo booth, we enter the details of the cyst of the item. And then all that information gets put in the item table. And it sure looks like we have enough information there. And the details memo, that's very flexible for multiple types of data, even that XML that we talked about. That could be a very flexible format. We don't have to change our tables if we decide that details mean something else. What's going to be important is we need to Whatever, whatever we have there needs to be acceptable to eBay. And that will be a matter of reading from the database, putting it into the, into the eBay st structure. You just, oh, there. Scared me for a minute. Your screen went black. Thought I lost the connection. I just shared my yeah. Lucid chart. <laughs> and, I have, and I have your chart on the other screen recorded as well from the Lucid share. So now... Uh, so thinking through, they, they log in, there's their users table. They uh, enter items, fill in details, and click enter. That information then gets put in our database. Uh, and we have, and then it updates that entry date. And then uh, we may, oh, and I noticed there, we want probably need to keep track separately of the approval date because we need to somehow have a trail of activities taken on our uh, our items. So let's go ahead and add approval date. You could put under ID approved or ID entry date. The order isn't a big deal. So thinking through that use case, that, that brought up that one, okay, I need to know when, when it was approved. Uh, 
Now thinking about, as it's now on eBay, it's been approved, do we have an eBay ID assigned to it? Or are we are we going to uh, you, uh, are we going are we going to keep that information in a separate transactions table? You know, like eBay transactions, or can we keep that information with the item? I always like to keep you know reduce my number of tables because you uh, it's easy to build too many tables. Uh, so I'm happy to throw in eBay assigned ID right there in the item table. Okay. And, and is this just a normal key or a foreign key? Uh, I would use it. A, I would just use it as a string because we don't have eBay tables, unless we're thinking we would. Let's go. Let's use the uh, item ID. And at this point, unless we decide we need a separate eBay table, that uh, we don't. We're not referencing another table. So let's think through that. The whole eBay scenario. You know, we could always. I just got a beep from something over here. Are you still there? Yes. Yeah. I got a you still there question. Oh, this this must this is the other hangout. I'm gonna close the other hangout. That was still hanging there. Oh, it's just not a problem. Yeah. I'm surprised I got my video going there too. So I'm gonna close that one. Just to reduce my possible bandwidth problems on this end. Um when we get an, when we have an eBay ID, uh, we can always inquire through the API. I'm assuming there's going to be an eBay eBay API that I can always query eBay specific information. And I'm thinking as you know, over time, as we sell a lot of things on eBay, eBay is probably going to delete history after a certain amount of time. And we'd have to decide: Are we, are we wanting to keep track of our eBay sales over time? We don't necessarily have to keep it in our database. We could just have a, you know, reports, electronic reports that we dump, that we can always, you know, search through through some other some other utility. We don't necessarily have to keep track of history in all of our tables. And it basically just have you know items that were sold, uh, you know the minimal bid, how many how many looks, those kind that kind of information is going to be useful as we try to optimize our system. Um, and but that information I, I can see just putting that in our in our item table. Um, All right, so you want me to add another field? I think we're good for now. Uh, we've got our user table, we're eBay. As we think about, well, let's think about reports. What are going to be our important reports? Say, say we're going to have a monthly report. Uh, we need to keep track of uh, selling price. So we do need an eBay table. Well, I'm think I'm wondering. I'm thinking about the information, and then we'll then we'll think about what table we need to put it in. So let's think about what we need, like for the monthly report. We're going to want to know uh, selling price. Well, I know I can get items. Uh, I'm definitely going to have to keep selling price somewhere. Um, how do we know what the minimum price is? Is that something we want want to have them enter as they as they enter items that we keep track of uh, suggested? minimal sale is that something they enter when they uh, put items up for sale and I can see that's probably uh, information we may want to keep in our item table uh, I don't remember on the URT site whether they had minimal bid but that's probably it would make sense that uh, we have a, a reasonable minimal bid or we're Unless we we're doing it for PR to get our name out there, and then we can start raising minimal bid. Yeah. So they're probably going to have a min uh, starting price or start yeah starting price minimum bid. I'm not sure what they call it on eBay. I'm thinking it's opening 
price. But whatever price that is, I'll, I'll call it uh, minimum price. And then if it does get sold, we have a selling price. We're probably going to want to keep track of the sold date. And now comes a question. Do we want to keep track of who's buying from us on eBay in our system? Is that something... Doesn't eBay keep track of that? That's right. You know, We could say when we want to find that out, we just write an API that pulls selling information out of eBay and keeps us from having to store all that information. Now, yeah. the possible disadvantage of that is if eBay decides to clean their history, we don't have access, access to it either. But we could have a separate app that just maybe archived eBay data. So if they do clean it out, we can always go back to our archive. And that could be separate from our tables in our system. So I'm thinking for the scope of our system, not to worry about historical data. Uh, there may be as much as a, as a utility to archive data, but not to go through the whole data analysis. That could be a, a separate, uh, <clears throat> maybe a, a separate program, separate project from this. But we'll definitely will need a selling price, eBay selling price, uh, the eBay minimal price, and the date sold. Now, what now do we... Now, selling price, you mean the price that it's sold for? Yeah, correct? yeah, yeah, that it's sold for. Um, now, remember, we do have that details field that those could just be things that are part of that XML, that we may not need to make it a separate item in our, in our table. But one consideration of that is, if we're doing searching on that a lot, uh, it's going to be harder to search through. Uh, if we have a lot of items sold, we're basically going to be processing that XML field constantly. Whereas, and whereas in a query, uh, it's easier to extract items quickly if you're extracting it on a specific field. So if you know you're searching based on selling price, or a sold date constantly, then you'd make it a separate field. I, I feel like that's something that would be sold or searched a decent amount. Yeah. So, so, so yeah, I'm so I'm a, a separate. Yeah. So I think uh, adding an I I date sold to the item table, and I think even I uh, sell selling price. I'd say since we're, when we're initiating the sale, that's going to be the only time we put in a minimum bid. I would throw that in the details part. But probably uh, sold date and the selling price. When we go to do reports on what was sold in this system, that will, that will work. So everything else, if we do a report like what sold this month, uh, we can get, you know, the 100 items sold. Uh, we know who the entry person was for that item. So we can say, we can do a search for how many were sold or who entered information, who was the, the bidder, what account was used. Um, now, re regarding inventory, uh, right now we have storage location as our only reference to inventory. Um, when thinking about when we're, when something is sold, we're going to need uh, shipping information. Uh, the weight that would probably be in your item details. Um, the shipping tracking number. I'm thinking, let's see, that's not going to go in eBay, I don't think, when it's sold. So I'm thinking we may want to add tracking number to our item. Inventory location tells us where it is in inventory. 
tracking number that would be given to us when it shipped and with that information you would get pickup date from the shipper so I'm thinking our system we don't need anything more than tracking number that we could hand to the customer when they say hey where the, where's this item with the tracking number we could go to the shipper um, do we have multiple shippers or we're going to go with one shipper uh, doesn't eBay just do one or I'm not sure I think eBay you when you sell something on eBay you can tell your shipping options I'm pretty sure. Okay, like, let's throw that in details then. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So it's, it's the same tracking number, and if we just have a string with no limitations, there it'll you go. hold whatever length it is yep. in value. Yeah, and we're not going to do a whole lot of searching on tracking number. So, no. yeah, I'm happy with that. So then a customer says, hey, I, we didn't get our item. Do we have information to find what, what went on with that? If a manager comes and says, are we selling enough laptops? we could search through and find uh, through our categories. Category. You know, yeah. So it looks like we have the information we need in our tables. Now we haven't talked about cardinality, but uh, I think it's, it, it's fairly common sense that uh, at the design side, as we think about cardinality, that you know, an, an, one item has many tables, uh, we know oh, you need to link the user ID to both the uh, user ID of the entry and user ID approved. In the database, it kind of makes you run, jump through little hoops to make two links between uh, two links between the same two two tables. But go ahead and draw a link. Uh, it's essentially a one to one, I believe. Let's see. Uh, no, a uh, one user can. Have many items, right? So so the one side would be on the user table. And the many side would be on the. Item table, so start at the user table, it looks like when you start, it's always the single side. So many. Items linked to that user in the user table. And the basic, like yeah, yeah. Oh, but link it to, dra drag it to the little dot uh, near the user. Both the user ID entry and user ID approved. It should have little handles that pop up right on that row. And the same thing for the user ID approved. See if it'll let you do, maybe it won't let you do multiple connections. See what happens. Um, I don't think I have an approved table or entry. Yeah, you got user ID approved on the item. See right below user ID entry. Oh, okay. So those will both link to the user table. We'll see if see if it lets you make the multiple connections. And are they both coming from one to many off of users? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it does let you. And then uh, thinking about cardinality, typically they like to put think about little verbs uh, to go with that. Uh, so when you think about cardinality between item and photos, you would say an item contains 1, 2, 12 photos. In the, in the, in, so they add a verb to that uh, when they're actually sitting through the, going through the design of the relationships between everything uh, and with the item to the or the user to the recording you would say one user in the user table can have and many items entered in the system and one user can approve many items so that's that's just basically basically a way to check is it making sense in this whole one-to-many relationship and so uh, Lucidchart makes it fairly easy to, to show the entity relationship diagram. And all that you want to do then is a, in, a, in the paragraph in an entity relationship diagram, basically uh, 
to make it meaningful to someone looking at relationships, uh, one thing people could do is you could put put little notes next to the connecting line, but that's a pain because you kind of want to rearrange your table sometimes. I would make a make a paragraph up above your tables, uh, just describing the relationships. So you'd say the item contained, you know, the one-to-many relationship between item and photos illustrates that each item contains at least one up to 12 the many photos. And it's remember, it's not zero to many. We know that there's a required at least one. So we would specify on that little line, I think, let's see, there's a I think there's a symbol for at least one. I think the double slash, if you look at your symbols in the, uh, if I do UML, if I search for UML, it may give me cardinality. Or no, maybe it's just on the properties of that line. Let me right click on a line. Oh, there it is up there at the top, I think. Let's see what we got up there. No, I'm looking for the cardinality part. I thought if I select a line, I can choose what's showing on each side. Right click? No. I'm not seeing it. Somewhere. I can choose my cardinality, what's showing up. Huh, maybe if I select it. No. No thing, nothing is, when you select a line, a connector, let me try another connector line. If I just grab a box and drag away from it. Manage fields, um, uh, it's not giving me the options of what the end looks like. Huh. Yeah. Well, somehow I can't I can't seem to control the symbol showing on either end of that. Uh, there's probably a way, but uh, we've got it. Uh, we maybe maybe a little put a little note next to that. Put a at le at least one. You can delete the one I started, uh, but you might put a little note at least one. And uh, same thing. Well, the same on the others. I think. I think the official symbol for it must be at least one is is two hash marks, but I'd have to verify my cardinality rules. I have that's the crow's foot notation, as they call that. The many is the is the three toed. But we are already done here, so we'll let you go. And we'll save this recording for Isaac. And Isaac, go ahead and update your drawing. And be sure to put a title at the top with a nice paragraph describing this diagram is the entity relationship diagram. Because remember what we're going to do with this and, and keep, you know, keep a, make, make it in a format that's easy enough to bearing into a, a Microsoft Word document because it will be part of our operation manual. So arrange it thinking that you might want it to fit on one page as part of a document. All right, I'm ending, stopping the recording here. And...